Have you ever contemplated what your last conversation would look like? What words would you choose? What emotions would you express? Imagine for a moment the gravity of that final dialogue. The words uttered, the emotions conveyed, the thoughts shared. All carrying a weight that is both profound and poignant. This isn't a discussion about the weather or the latest news. No, this conversation is one of finality, of reflection, of truth. It's a conversation that is as unique as the individual uttering their last words and as universal as the human experience itself. Think of it not as a farewell, but as an ultimate expression of one's journey, the culmination of a life lived in all its complexity and simplicity. This is the stage where life's deepest questions are asked, where the unquestionable is questioned, and where the essence of one's existence is distilled to its most fundamental elements. What would you say? Would you recount the joys and sorrows of your life, the triumphs and the trials, the love and the loss? Or perhaps would you share the wisdom gleaned from your journey, the insights that only time and experience can bestow? These conversations, these final dialogues, are not just about saying goodbye. They are about understanding life from the perspective of its end, about finding meaning in the face of mortality, about expressing the inexpressible. They are about deeply connecting with another human being at the most profound level, at the very edge of existence. These conversations are not confined to the realm of the dying. Each one of us has the capacity to engage in these deeply meaningful dialogues, to explore the depths of our own existence and to share our unique perspectives with those around us. It is through these discussions that we can truly understand the essence of our shared human experience and perhaps even catch a glimpse of the mysteries that lie beyond. The curtain call of life is a moment of profound significance and the conversations held at this juncture can be transformative. Imagine for a moment two people on the brink of the inevitable engaged in two very different conversations. In the hush of an intimate room, the first individual is engrossed in a conversation laced with religious undertones. The discourse is profound and heavy, filled with references to scriptures and divine intervention. The atmosphere is solemn, the air filled with an almost tangible hope for salvation and redemption. The discussion revolves around the mysteries of the afterlife, the possibility of divine judgment and the promise of an eternal paradise. It's a conversation that seeks comfort in faith, solace in the divine, and hope in the unknown. Meanwhile, in a different corner of the world, another conversation unfolds. This one, however, is devoid of religious motifs. It's a secular dialogue, an exchange of life stories, experiences, and personal growth. The conversation is light yet meaningful, filled with laughter, tears, and everything in between. They talk about the first heartbreak, the joy of first success, the sting of failure, and the sweetness of redemption. They share stories of love and loss, of triumph and defeat, of joy and sorrow. It's a conversation that finds comfort in shared experiences, solace in human connection, and hope in the memories they've created. The contrast between these two conversations is stark. One finds solace in the promise of the divine, the other in the beauty of lived experiences. One seeks comfort in the afterlife, the other in the life they've lived. One hopes for salvation, the other for the chance to relive their memories one last time. The divergence of these dialogues shows that end-of-life conversations are not one-size-fits-all affairs. It's a testament to the uniqueness of the human experience, to the diversity of our beliefs, and to the deeply personal nature of our final moments. It's a reminder that in the face of the inevitable, what matters most is not the promise of what comes after, but the beauty and richness of the life we've lived. And so we find that these two conversations, as different as they may be, share a common thread. The quest for meaning, for understanding and for peace at the end of life's journey. Let's delve deeper into the secular dialogue. What does it entail? In the realm of the secular, end-of-life conversations take on a different hue. They are shorn of religious undertones, yet they are not bereft of meaning, depth or profundity. Instead, they pivot around themes such as gratitude, acceptance, legacy and wisdom. 
Imagine a conversation steeped in gratitude. It's a heart-to-heart -heart exchange where one expresses appreciation for the experiences lived, the lessons learned and the people encountered. It's a moment to reflect on the ebb and flow of life, acknowledging the joy and pain, the triumphs and trials, the love and loss. It's a time to say thank you for the journey with all its twists and turns. Then acceptance. There's a certain grace, a certain peace that comes with accepting the inevitable. It's not about giving up, but about embracing the reality of our mortality. It's about recognizing that we are transient beings in an ever-evolving universe. It's about making peace with the impermanence of existence. Next, we have legacy. When the sands of time run low, one may begin to contemplate the footprints left behind. What will remain once we're gone? What will be our contribution to the grand tapestry of life? The secular dialogue encourages reflections on these questions, prompting a self-examination of our actions, our impact and our legacy. Finally, wisdom. As we tread the path towards the twilight of life, we gather pearls of wisdom from our experiences. The secular conversation provides a platform to share this wisdom, to impart the lessons learned and to pass on the insights gleaned from a lifetime of living. In the secular dialogue, we find a raw and authentic exchange that transcends the physical and touches the very essence of our humanity. It is a dialogue that reminds us that, in the end, it's not about religion and being saved. It's a totally different conversation. It's about life, love and legacy. It's about the human journey in its purest form. But what role does religion play in these final exchanges? This is a question that often lingers in the air, hanging like a delicate balance between acceptance and denial, faith and scepticism. When it comes to end-of-life conversations, the role of religion can be as varied as the individuals involved. For some, religion offers a comforting framework, a sense of continuity beyond the here and now, a beacon of hope in the face of the inevitable. It provides answers to the unanswerable, solace in the face of despair and the promise of an eternal reunion. But let's be clear about one thing. Religion, while comforting for some, doesn't have to be the crux of these conversations. Indeed, these dialogues are so much more than discussions about faith or salvation. They're about understanding, empathy, shared experiences and an opportunity to express unspoken feelings. They are about the laughter that echoed in the hallways of a shared past, the tears that were shed in secret corners, the dreams that were woven on starlit nights, the hopes that were dashed and then rebuilt. They are about the love that was, that is and that will always be. Think of religion, if you will, as a companion on this journey. It can provide a comforting presence, a familiar voice in the stillness of the night. But it doesn't have to steer the conversation. It doesn't have to define the direction or dictate the pace. The beauty of these end-of-life conversations lies in their authenticity, in their raw and unfiltered truth. They are a testament to the power of human connection, to the bonds that transcend the confines of our mortal existence. They capture the essence of our shared humanity, reminding us that we are, at our core, beings of love and compassion. So, as we navigate these conversations, let's remember that the focus should always be on the person, their life, their experiences, their joys and sorrows. Religion can be a companion in these discussions, but it doesn't have to steer the conversation. So, how do we navigate these delicate discussions? We tread lightly, we tread softly, yet we tread with purpose. End-of-life conversations are not about who is right or who is wrong. They are not about pushing an agenda or proving a point. They are about understanding, about empathy, about connecting on a level deeper than everyday chatter. In these conversations, the art lies not just in speaking, but in listening. Active listening is the brush with which we paint the canvas of understanding. It's not about waiting for your turn to speak, but about absorbing, processing and understanding what the other person is saying. It's about allowing their words to resonate within you, to stir emotions, to provoke thoughts. It's about giving them the room to express their fears, their regrets, their hopes and their dreams. Empathy, on the other hand, is the palette of colours we use. 
It's about putting yourself in the shoes of the person you're talking to. It's about feeling what they're feeling, seeing the world through their eyes. It's about recognizing that their perspective, their experiences, their beliefs are just as valid as yours. It's about letting go of judgment, of preconceptions and of biases. Creating a safe space for open dialogue is the frame that holds the canvas. It's about establishing an environment of trust where the person feels comfortable sharing their deepest thoughts and emotions. It's about reassuring them that their words, their feelings and their stories matter. It's about letting them know that they are not alone, that you are there with them every step of the way. And finally, respect is the gallery in which this art piece is displayed. Respect for the person's beliefs, their experiences and their decisions is paramount. It's about acknowledging that their journey is unique, that their story is their own, and that they have the right to narrate it in their own way. End-of-life conversations are a dance of delicate words and profound emotions, a testament to our shared journey in this grand adventure called life.